overall, the trend of Bitcoin is up. If you look back on over the years, the trend is up and, and whenever I'm looking at the charts, I'm always saying the trend is your friend yeah. until the end. But as long as you realize that this is um, not always going to pay off and it is a gamble and what, whatever money you put in, you've got to be able to afford to lose. You can't be putting in money that you need for your rent or something like this. This is, this is never going to end well. Swissborg. 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 Swissborg is sorti ce matin. They have an app where you can buy crypto. They connect to Binance, HitBTC, LMAX, and Kraken and find the best rates in the markets. What I like about Swissborg is that they have an amazing app that can directly buy cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and also cash out as well. Through Swissborg, all assets will have a fiat gateway. And here is the thing. Premium features gives you zero fee trading. That is zero fees. If you want to buy Bitcoin with fiat, I suggest you buy through Swissborg rather than Coinbase. And if you're interested in trading the likes of Ethereum or Bitcoin, use Swissborg's application. Moving and confusing crypto asset market. Get an edge with Crypto Slate Edge. Enhanced, in-depth news coverage and extensive crypto assets and sector data are all part of your exclusive access as a member, helping you understand the market with features such as on-chain metrics and sentiments, all of which allow you to convert knowledge into action with an ad-free experience. As a bonus, access our private Telegram channel to receive live insights whilst engaging with the CryptoSlate community. Subscribe now at CryptoSlate.com forward slash edge. Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the no BS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we have a carpool like theme <laughs> with the one and only Crypto Jack here. Yes. Straight from Dubai, we're gonna talk about some amazing stuff with regards to Bitcoin, to trading, accumulating your wealth, adding to those sats. Yes. And we're gonna kick off with a very nice story so you can also get to know Jack on a more personal level and learn some long-term, hopefully successful habits definitely. Uh, and make this meaningful, yeah? Yeah, definitely. It's gonna be a really nice uh, conversation and hopefully people can learn a lot from it. That's the idea, right? That's the idea, but we're not gonna sing though, right? No, not today. <laughs> no spice girls. Maybe part two, we can sing. <laughs> <laughs> or two, we can speak some Spice Girls for you guys. <laughs> but you know, one, one of the first things I really want to ask you, Jack, is, you know, you have an incredible story. You've been through some real struggles getting to know you a bit more in the past week. And I think that's really important. Like a lot of people see, you know, success overnight and all these fake stories, but don't really realize the pain that many go through. And I'd love to ask you, Jack, just kicking off with who is Jack and, you know, what yeah, have you been through? Yeah, definitely. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that um, overnight success usually takes a few years. It's, it's, it's not actually overnight, but people don't see that um, the behind the scenes, the work, the struggles, the, the amount of effort you put in. They just see the end result. So it's nice to share with, to people uh, about the struggles and, uh, and just how you actually got to that end result. Because if people know this, then maybe they can replicate it or they can take some inspiration from it uh, and apply it to their own lives, something, something like that. So I think it, it's... Uh, it's uh, very, very valuable, actually. That's exactly it. I think that's a really key point. And hopefully, guys, here you can learn some more long-term, you know, sustainable habits and stuff like that. But what were the most, like, the darkest times for you, Jack? In, in um, for me, um, so before I was doing crypto and before I was uh, into Bitcoin and everything like that, I was actually doing my training to become a, a pilot, like a, an airline pilot. And uh, I finished all my exams, my American exams, and then I wanted to work in Europe, so I had to um, take 14 more exams to change, to convert them back to the European license. But unfortunately, um, I have ADHD and uh, mild dyslexia, so I find it very difficult to, to focus and concentrate in exams. So these 14 exams, they were like absolute torture for me. It was like the worst thing. And I passed uh, 11 of them, but I just couldn't pass the final three. I just, I just couldn't do it. No matter how much I studied, I just, I just couldn't do it. Um, so I came back from uh, America when I did my training and uh, I felt like a failure. I felt like I couldn't do anything in my life. I, I just felt 
horrible and I, I was looking for jobs, like a normal job at the mall, at Starbucks, something like this, and there was just nothing available. So with all this built up frustration, I, I decided to, to apply that and put it into something. So from that moment on, I just was researching every day. I'd wake up at six, five, six a.m. until like two, three a.m. at night. And I was researching and growing my knowledge, um, not about crypto at this point, um, about different businesses and ideas. And then I, I came up with the idea of uh, drop shipping. I'm sure some people may know what this is. Um, but before, before any of the crypto stuff, I, I really didn't have anything. Like I, I couldn't even afford to go to McDonald's and buy myself a meal like for five, six dollars. I had like maybe 70 cent on my, on my bank card. I had literally absolutely nothing. Uh, and I just failed my, my exams. So I had nowhere I, I could have gone uh, or done anything. I was lucky enough uh, I could stay with my parents, of course, but um, yeah, not everyone is this, is, is this lucky in life. And I really just felt like my life was going nowhere. I felt like I had no real motivation to do anything. It was just like a really, um, like a dark, not a dark place, but just a, a, a little bit depressing where I, I don't have anything to do. Um, so I just kind of channeled this uh, frustration and this sadness and just really pushed it into apply myself um, to, to create a business. And from that moment on, when I created that business, I built that up over a year and then I sold that business and I, and I put it, every, every cent I sold that business for, I put it into Bitcoin. And this was back in um, late, no, mid, mid 2017. I think Bitcoin was around two to $3,000, maybe two to $4,000. And I put everything I had into Bitcoin. So I had a good few Bitcoin at that point and I was absolutely over the moon. Uh, and still I would struggle to pay for things like um, coffees and stuff because all my money I had was in Bitcoin. I didn't want to touch any of this Bitcoin because I knew the future, uh, the appreciation of Bitcoin and the future value that it could hold. Um, so I, it was really difficult actually. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go anywhere. I just stayed home and was researching. And then I decided like, wow, this is really interesting. This is really cool. I wonder if there are other people out there that are doing the same and not wanting to spend the, their money because they want to just stack the sats as much as they can. And there was a lot of people uh, on forums and on YouTube as well. Back then there was different people doing YouTube videos and uh, it really inspired me to create YouTube videos and kind of uh, document uh, my life and my journey in Bitcoin because I thought it would be interesting. So from there I was making videos about Bitcoin, about news, about technical analysis and then that came into a little bit of trading and how I can help people with, with trading and everything like that. And then since then, that's been the last three, four years uh, and I've just been doing that pretty much every day and never really looked back and I, I hope to always uh, continue to stack Bitcoin and stack sats as long as I can really. Even if Bitcoin's still a million dollars, I'll still continue to keep buying if I have any spare money buying Bitcoin because um, in the future, it could just go to even more. So uh, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. And any of you at home watching, if you're not already putting any spare money you have or just money you might spend on Starbucks, like five, six dollars, put that into Bitcoin because you never know, one day that five, six dollars could be worth a few hundred. And if you accumulate that over time, it could be worth something that's completely life-changing. Absolutely. So that, that those struggles really led you to making a bold move. It seems like all yeah. of a sudden I take all my money. I'm going to put it all into Bitcoin, yep. all in, right? Yep. All in, yeah. All in. This uh, isn't maybe the best way to go. Uh, <laughs> you can learn from this definitely by uh, dollar cost averaging rather than putting it all in. Um, but I'm sure many of you have probably done the same as well. Uh, but definitely if you're at home watching this, dollar cost averaging is the better strategy uh, to go about that. But, definitely. Uh, that DCA is what people call it on, yep. on Twitter. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And so what was the aha moment where you thought, okay, you know, I want to take my money that I've earned through this company that I built and I'm going to put it in Bitcoin. Was there a specific moment? Where were you at the time? And was what was the light bulb that just went bing? <laughs> I don't know. It's actually, it's funny. It was actually my dad who introduced me to Bitcoin. Yeah. No way. Yeah, it was crazy. He was, um, him and some friends were buying Bitcoin uh, and other altcoins as well at the time. And he said, hey, maybe you just sold your um, business. Maybe you should put like 500 bucks in, something like that. And I looked at it and researched it. He told me about it as well. And I researched it even more. And I just went down a complete uh, rabbit hole. And this is what led me to think, basically, screw it, let's do it. Let's put it all in. Maybe it wasn't the best idea, but looking back, it was a great idea. But in hindsight, you can't really tell these things, can you, in the moment. Um, so yeah, that's really the aha moment I had when my dad was telling me about it. And then as the price started to go up, we had that all time high at $20,000 back in the previous uh, bull cycle. And I think it was um, at that point on, I knew that I could have a career or a future just in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and everything like that. I, I knew uh, it was a, a foreseeable uh, future career. 
That makes a lot of sense. Were there any like trading mistakes or like failures back in, in those days where you thought oh, like, I'm never going to do that again, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think we've all lost a lot <laughs> of money lost. on uh, yeah. altcoins um, back in 2017. Yeah. People thought that every altcoin was going to the moon, yeah. which yes, it did for a certain extent. But of course, what goes up eventually, it must come down yeah. to some extent. Um, so yeah, I put money in different altcoins. I won't name them, but I put money in different altcoins. It didn't do so well. I kind of left it. And then the, the altcoin just completely just crashed. And uh, yeah, but you learn from these ex uh, mistakes. They're ex expensive mistakes sometimes, but the values that you get from them can be applied into the next time you do it. So maybe you won't make that mistake again. Um, trading as well, I've lost tens of thousands of dollars on trades. Um, but again, this is part of learning to trade and trading. And even professional, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a professional trader, but even professional traders who do it day in, day out, all day, they still make losing trades. So if you're making losing trades, it's, it's, it's not the end of the world. Just look why you, you lost that trade and try and identify what you can do better next time and take that losing trade as an experience to go ahead and develop your next trade into something great. That makes a lot of sense. Really, really good. Some good gems there. And like you said, sometimes we win, sometimes yeah, we, it's we learn. It's just life. <laughs> exactly. Lose, as long as exactly. you take that as an experience. Exactly. And exactly. And, exactly. And change your habits. That, that's a really good uh, tip right there. And when it comes to, to Bitcoin itself, so you at the moment now, like what does a, a good portfolio look like in terms of the ratio of fiat, For ratio of Bitcoin? I'll, for, I'll talk about my portfolio Bitcoin. and then uh, I can yeah. talk about what maybe um, a newbie or an intermediate kind of crypto investor might might want to do. So first of all, me, I have, first of all, I have, I'm a little bit crazy still to this day. Um, I have like 99.2, I calculate it, 99.2% of my net worth in crypto. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm all in. Carl just said 99.5. Yeah, wow, he's an extra ago. 0.3. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are really yeah. all in. Yeah, That's definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, we're really all in. So um, I think that uh, because I have so much of my net worth invested in crypto. Um, yes, it may not be the smartest idea, but again, I, I really believe in Bitcoin um, like like nothing else in this world. And I think it's gonna be a very smart financial move. However, um, actually Bitcoin, mostly Bitcoin around 90, 85 to 90% in Bitcoin, um, the rest in Ethereum and a few uh, a few percent allocation to old coins, but mainly Bitcoin and Ethereum, some old coins in there as well, like of course, Swissborg. So yeah, uh, mainly mainly Bitcoin, Ethereum, I have some altcoins as well. Um, and I think that's fairly good um, for my personal, um, my personal uh, needs from investing. But if, if you're kind of new to crypto, I would just start with buying 50 bucks of Bitcoin, maybe 100 bucks of Bitcoin, maybe 50 bucks of Ethereum as well. But the overall portfolio, I would mainly tailor it towards Bitcoin because this is, although Bitcoin is still a risky asset class in, in the sense of traditional investments, it's a kind of a safer, a safer one than maybe some of the other altcoins. Um, Bitcoin or Ethereum is going to be the safest, but you can definitely put some money into other altcoins as well. And you can even throw a few hundred bucks or a few thousand bucks, depending on your financial situation, into some kind of uh, low cap alts, maybe if you want to have a gamble. But as long as you realize that this is um, not always going to pay off and it is a gamble and what, whatever money you put in, you've got to be able to afford to lose. You can't be putting in money that you need for your rent or something like this. This is, this is never going to end well uh, in situations like that. But mainly Bitcoin, Ethereum uh, is my top picks, of course. Very boring, I know, uh, extremely boring. But, but it's a conservative, yeah, right? It's a conservative it's, approach. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> that's just what it is. A few old coins in there to spice things up and you're good to go, really. Yeah, and I think a lot of people th believe that because of the, the issues we're having in the traditional world yep. that just wealth preservation is already a great thing, Definitely. right? Not losing Definitely. value yeah. wealth, right? Definitely, <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt. Um, some people, they uh, when they see Bitcoin dumping, they'll sell it and put it into USDT, for example. Personally, I don't really care too much about the USD value of Bitcoin. I only care about how many Bitcoin I have. And if I can accumulate more Bitcoin by trading or investing in an altcoin, and then if that altcoin pumps up eventually at the right time, if I maybe don't believe in it or my views on it change, then I can allocate some of that Bitcoin, take some profits out, put it back into Bitcoin. Um, and then hopefully over the years, next five, 10 years, grow my Bitcoin portfolio um, to a nice sizable number. That would be, that's everyone's goal, right? To, yeah. uh, to, to stack Bitcoin and uh, enjoy life. It could be like the sats, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, man, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, you, you mentioned obviously you do lots of TA on your channel as well, and you know you've been you know, making some cool shots and cool calls. And you know when you when you look at, at the actual charts, and are you more of a chartist at the moment? Do you more use more technical indicators? Do you more do you use more on chain data? Well, uh, I, what are some? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think on chain data is very very important. Um, for example, the number of addresses 
holding a certain amount of Bitcoin, you can kind of see where the market is going. Big institutions buying Bitcoin. This is really, really nice. It's a, a great indicator. For example, Tesla recently buying like $1.5 billion worth of uh, Bitcoin. At what price? I'm not sure what price they bought. About 35,000, maybe 34,000, something in this uh, in this region. Uh, and that's a really a, a huge indicator that if a company like that is prepared to, to, to enter Bitcoin at this some people would call high price. I don't call it a high price, but if you're new to Bitcoin, you may think, wow, I can't afford one Bitcoin, it's really high. But if they're jumping in at $35,000 with 1.5 billion, it shows you that there's, there's maybe so much more scope for, for room for Bitcoin. And even talking about $100,000 Bitcoin still seems very conservative. I mean, from where we are now, 100,000 is what, 2.5, 3X? It's not, it's not really that great. It's not a great deal, a great amount. Um, so yeah, I think these on-chain data is very, very important. Um, I also think technical analysis is very important as well. Um, and I just, I just think that overall, the trend of Bitcoin is up. If you look back on over the years, the trend is up and, and whenever I'm looking at the charts, I'm always saying the trend is your friend. Yeah. Until the end. Until the end. <laughs> I like that. It's the yeah. first time I hear it. Yeah, it's many, many like people, it. many, many people use this saying. <laughs> but um, I think the overall trend of Bitcoin is up. We, everyone knows this. Everyone's trying to get as much Bitcoin as they can. Look at Grayscale there, buying more Bitcoin than's being mined. This tells you like completely that they want every Bitcoin in existence. They want it all. Um, and the amount of Bitcoin they're buying is, is phenomenal. So I really do think these things are a huge indicator that we are still bullish. We do have time left in this cycle. And uh, I think there's a lot more money to be made. That's super cool. So on chain data, just to recap that, you love to see the amount of wallet addresses being yep. created. Yeah, and the, the amount in, in the wallet addresses. So you can see, um, for example, what uh, people are allocating to Bitcoin. And you can also see, for example, the amount of uh, millionaire addresses, how many people are holding a Bitcoin with a USD amount makes them a millionaire. And you can see this increasing over, over time and going exponential, in fact, with the recent Bitcoin prices. Um, so, so yeah, I think this is a great, great indicator. That's a really good indicator because, you know, I guess if people who already have lots of Bitcoin are continuing to accumulate Bitcoin yep. instead of exactly. dumping, you know, yeah, taking exactly. profits, it's exactly. a great sign, right? Yeah, it's a very, very key sign, I think. It's very important, actually. What about the hash rate? You know, a lot of people say the difficulties in the hash rate. Is that a cool on-chain indicator? Yeah, I think, I think it's very important as well. I mean, there is so many, uh, you can go to Glassnode on Twitter or to on their website and there's just endless things you can dive into. I think it's all extremely important and uh, it really depends on the kind of person you are, the kind of trader you are, if you're like an optimist or a lot of this, when you look at hard data, yes, it's hard data and it's facts on the chart, but it can be interpreted multiple different ways depending on if you're bullish or bearish. Yeah, so I think Glassnode is a really interesting website and especially if you haven't seen it before, um, it basically takes all the on-chain data from, from Bitcoin and everything like this, and it, it lays it out and easy and use, I f feel like I'm pitching it or something right now, but <laughs> it, it's, it's, really, it's really useful. It really and you, you don't even need to pay for it. You can have a free account and use some of, some of the different um, on-chain data that they have. But I think it's, it's I mean, you can just go on there, on there yourself and look at the different things that it has to offer. And it has a complete, like, just in-depth analysis of the full blockchain and all the on-chain data which is going on. I think it's, it, it's really important to understand this as well, not just looking at the, the chart and the, the price of Bitcoin. I think this is a really, uh, a really cool fundamental thing to, uh, in fact, include in your analysis, not just looking at the price uh, and what's on Twitter and news and stuff like this. That makes so much sense. And uh, so thank you so much for sharing that on-chain analysis. You guys heard it. It's, there's some really cool metrics, as Jack was saying, and really like the metrics are just growing day yep. by day, right? Of you course, yeah, so of course. So many data sets now that are really meaningful number of transactions and, and like you said, the wallets and the hash rates. And, yep. and what about technicals in, in that sense? Are you more of a technical indicator, chartist? Do you combine both? And what are some cool things that you've I, learned over I, the I really like, um, it's really boring again, but it works. I really like looking at, for example, uh, the trend and I like looking at support and resistance as well. I think these are really cool, easy, really simple ways to get into maybe trading or looking at different places to accumulate uh, at different price levels. I think when you pull up the chart on TradingView, for example, you can identify different levels of support and resistance. And unless you're in like uncharted territory like the Bitcoin price is now yeah. at new all-time highs, when we have pullbacks, for example, um, it, it's really easy to tell where the price of Bitcoin might be, may be going um, in the next 
kind of few weeks, few days, because most or usually the price will go to previous levels it's been at. Of course, it's not certain that it will do this, but usually the, the price will tell, tend to gravitate to previous price areas that it's been to. This is not only about the market, this is human psychology as well. For example, $20,000, $10,000, it's a very psychological level. Uh, for example, like $50,000, we're very close to $50,000. And I think that um, once we in fact breach $50,000, we, we could see the Bitcoin price going absolutely exponential because once we broke kind of 20, 30, 40, now 50 is like, wow, it's half of 100,000. When you, when you put it, when you actually put, speak it out there into existence, it, it just seems crazy that Bitcoin is near, nearly worth $50,000. And, and once we break that, I think it's going to be really exponential for the Bitcoin price. We're going to see a lot of growth. Already we're seeing many companies coming into, into Bitcoin. I think this is only going to continue in, into the future. And, you know, Carl mentioned something really cool, and he was, he was saying the same thing, you know, $50,000 and eventually $100,000 this year. Um, but he also said that, you know, it's not just Bitcoin gaining value, but it's also fiat losing yeah, its value. Yeah, definitely. Is, is that how you see it Yeah, as well? this is absolutely, absolutely key. In some countries, for example, we've got hyperinflation where they need a wheelbarrow of money just to buy a loaf of bread or something. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's completely outrageous, uh, actually, that the governments are, uh, are letting this happen and the, the, the currency is just collapsing. For example, the US dollar, if you look at a chart on the, the US dollar on the purchasing power it's lost, lost over the years, it's pretty much the opposite of Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going straight to the moon and I don't know where this is going, but it's going right down. It, it's, it's completely crazy and over the next few years, we're going to see the value of the US dollar completely depreciate, especially with everything we've had going on in 2020. They've been printing a lot of money to try and, um, for example, stimulus checks and everything like this. And this really doesn't, people think, oh, wow, I'm getting a free 1200 bucks. But um, it, it's really not the case in the long term effects of this um, on the financial, on the traditional markets as well. And on um, the, the, the currency, for example, US dollar, it, it's really not going to be good in the long term. And something like Bitcoin, you can put your money, go from a depreciating asset into an appreciating asset. And really, over, over time, if you allocate some fiat into Bitcoin, you're going to be much, much better off. So, Jack, you were talking about accumulating sats and really, you know, wealth preservation and growing wealth in the future. Like, I would love to hear a few useful tips or something, lessons that you've learned for other people out there who want to accumulate Bitcoin and definitely, get into the game. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, you've got to real, really understand what your primary focus is. Is it to grow your Bitcoin or is it just to make a little bit of money in the next few months? If it's, if it's to grow your Bitcoin, then you really need to kind of change your mindset about how you're accumulating Bitcoin and maybe things that you're using or spending in your life, maybe it doesn't need to be spent, um, for example, maybe buying lavish things, delaying that gratification to, until until the future, uh, and maybe that will uh, help, in fact, grow your wealth. But I think um, it's really important to, 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 even if you're just can afford to put $5 a week into Bitcoin, a dollar, it doesn't matter, whatever you can afford to put in your own financial circumstance. I think if you look back in the next kind of five, 10 years, you're going to be giving yourself a, a huge pat on the back, really. I, I think you are. And I think just by doing that, also by um, investing in other things, for example, some altcoins, maybe top 100 alt, something like that, maybe put a little allocation in somewhere like that. And maybe over the next six to eight months or 12 months, once we still have this cycle, you can maybe 2x, 10x, even 100x, you never know. And then you can allocate that money back into to Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or whatever, whatever it is, and you can just continue to grow your, uh, your portfolio there. Also, um, not only crypto as well, of course, I have most of my wealth in crypto, but most people are not going to be interested in this. Most people will want, for example, 30%, 40% crypto, maybe some real estate, um, some houses, property, maybe some gold and silver, and then maybe some cash reserves as well. And maybe like a, an ISA in the UK or a, in the US, I think it's a Roth IRA or something like this. And so also this is, this is very good. But I think mainly Bitcoin, Ethereum, if you can kind of put money in that you don't, that you maybe have on the side, maybe you were going to, uh, for example, buy, I, I don't know, for, for example, buying a Starbucks coffee every day. If you spend $6 a day uh, on, on a coffee over the course of the month and a year, that adds up. And if you look on, on Twitter, there's a Twitter account that actually tracks the, the stimulus uh, check. I don't know if you've seen it, oh, but uh, no, the stimulus check, it was cool. $1,200. And uh, it tracked, if you put all that $1,200 into Bitcoin when it came out, back when Bitcoin was like $25,000, that $1,200 turned into like $3,000. I haven't checked mm. what it is now, but it must be 
a good four or five thousand dollars. So you can really, if you just if you just delay the the satisfaction of buying like a new I don't know stereo system or a new uh, the new iPhone for example, and and just put this into Bitcoin. And um, for example, when the new iPhone came out, the iPhone 12, that this was in uh, September, October. I'm not sure Bitcoin was at that price. Maybe. $14,000, rather than buying the new iPhone for $1,500, you could have put this into Bitcoin, and now look where Bitcoin's gone. It's at $45,000, $50,000. Absolutely. So you could have 2, 2.5x that money. So just little little things like this, I think, are, are really good to understand, and you really have to know your, like, your long-term goal uh, with these things. Those are some really good tips, and you know, it reminds me of a, an episode we had with Obi from CoinFloor. He said exactly mm -hmm. what you said. He said, spend the soft money save the hard money. Yep, definitely. Right? Definitely. It's really, really, really good and actionable advice. Yeah, and so is that, is that why, so most of this Bitcoin, that's why you're accumulating stats because you believe it's ultimately, it's the hard money, yep. it's that real store yep. of wealth, yep. and I can spend all my cash definitely. that is gonna... And uh, people watching at home, they might think, why is he talking about this and he's driving a Lamborghini, he bought that with Bitcoin. No, I didn't buy it with Bitcoin. I bought it with uh, USDT. So I didn't actually spend any Bitcoin on it, so. Yeah, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I think that's I mean, those are already some really interesting points, like you're saying, you know, on being able to add on to the sats, add more Bitcoin over time, the conservative approach yeah. to people like us all in yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. Is that is that really one of the key points in, in preserving and growing our wealth is understanding our own behavior, doing some definitely. self analysis and reflection or definitely. I think a, a lot of it comes in for yourself, self discipline and kind of the, the practices and the way you live your life. If you're kind of, uh, if you like to spend money a lot on things that don't matter, um, I think a lot of it is self-discipline and a lot of it is just, just putting, having enough discipline to not buy that thing or to not do that thing that's maybe overpriced and just put that into investment and then in years to come, you're going to be thanking yourself so, so much. Uh, like most people who were investing in Bitcoin back in 2014, 2013, back then they were even not wanting to spend any of their Bitcoin and Bitcoin was a few hundred bucks or a thousand bucks and now you can guarantee that they are extremely happy with that decision. So I think in years to come, we could look back at this video and, um, and maybe it could be in the same situation that Bitcoin might be 200K, 300K, 500K. And we could think, wow, I, I didn't need to buy that iPhone and sell my Bitcoin to buy that iPhone. That could have been worth like... 10x the amount. 10x so. the amount. You know, that's funny because it reminds me of, of a book called Rich Dad Poor yeah, Dad. Yeah, I read it. Have yeah, you read it? Really yeah, Robert nice. Kiyosaki. Yeah, really about nice. assets and liabilities. Yeah, it's really nice. And you yeah. need money to work yep. for you and yep. the money you're earning off interest, then you pay the liabilities exactly with the interest exactly rather than this. spending yeah. your own money. This is a great book. If you haven't yeah. already read it, I'd highly recommend it. I'm sure you would too. It's an amazing yeah, book, right, for great. money management. It's one of the first business books I read, actually. It's really, really. It changes how you think, doesn't it, about, about money and about investing and about kind of your outcomes and your goals in, in, in life. It, it's a really excellent book, actually. And there's a book called The Millionaire Next Door, which is exactly what you're yeah. saying, like avoiding spending on too many lavish things, maybe tether, you know, buy yourself yeah. a nice car once, but not having to get the iPhone 12 as soon as it comes out yeah, and exactly. having these habits of living exactly. in a modest way, right? Exactly, so The Millionaire Next Door, someone might not look like they are traditionally wealthy, <laughs> yeah. but actually they are more wealthy than the guy who has the Lambo, probably. And this, this is a massive case in, in life as well. The person who is showing that they have a lot, usually they don't have as quite as much as they would like you to think they have so. absolutely man are there any other books or any other like uh, you know you, t you talked about earlier like how some people inspired you to get into the space obviously your dad was super cool yeah, yeah, you know really a guy who really, really is inspiring, really inspiring. Yeah. Uh, are there any other like crypto non-crypto books or anything that can help people learn more if the they Bitcoin want to standards really 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 good uh, I think that's uh, absolutely amazing amazing book uh, and this there's, there's so many about Bitcoin you can literally just go on Amazon type in Bitcoin and see the reviews and see them. Anything you read about Bitcoin and stuff, it's not going to be time wasted uh, at all. There's so many good documentaries as well. Uh, so many good documentaries, even on Netflix, there's some about Bitcoin and just consuming as much Bitcoin and crypto content as you can to give yourself the knowledge to make like educated decisions about investing. I think this is a very, very smart move rather than just throwing everything in immediately, do some research, spend a few weeks, uh, even a few months, get to know about crypto, get to know about Bitcoin, why it's beneficial for you and society on the whole. And I think this is gonna be really valuable.
Yeah, like the Bitcoin standard. Yeah, I think it's the yeah. Bible for yeah, Bitcoin. Like Safety Dynamos standard. professor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what a what a ledge. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, man. exactly. And one thing, like, so for those who want to explore a bit more risk, like I know that you're also involved in, in derivatives, margin trade, leverage trading. Yeah. Um, how is that? Is that is that just for a specific type of person, or, or can you the tell way, us your The way I would look at it, of course, uh, it's extremely risky. So uh, I would never allocate more than a few percent, maybe five percent of my maybe less even one or two percent of my portfolio into these trade trades of course depending on if your portfolio is a hundred bucks one or two dollars you're not gonna nothing's gonna happen with that but you need to allocate a small amount but you have to keep in mind that it, it, it is risky um, but if you are trading with the the right kind of knowledge and you're not trading with a crazy high leverage you can make uh, a load of money for example now I have a trade open I'm long since uh, thirteen thousand dollars uh, it was a 22x leverage, which is extremely high. I would never recommend this, um, but it was only with 0.1 Bitcoin. And usually I trade with one or two Bitcoin, so the, the capital I put in was a lot less. And from that um, three, four thousand dollars that was there, uh, now that trade is in around 130 thousand dollars in profit, oh, just wow. from three, four thousand dollars. So the potential is completely huge. Um, but of course, the risk as well is is very, very, very big. So I wouldn't recommend people do leverage trading if they're first into crypto. I really w wouldn't recommend this at all. First of all, get yourself used to buying Bitcoin. Then maybe start having buying some alts. Then maybe trade a few alts. But just you can just trade with 50 bucks. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Or something that you can afford to lose. Yeah. And then maybe you can dabble into some leverage trading. But it, it, it's very risky. The, the rewards are incredible, but also the risk is, is very large as well. So just be, just be careful. Uh, the easiest way to trade with leverage is trading like a breakout strategy when there's a, a, a breakout from a known level of uh, resistance or support, something like this. This is the easiest way. You can watch many videos on YouTube. I have them on my channel, many other channels as well. Crypto Jack, yeah, definitely guys, check Crypto Jack on YouTube, great channel as well. But you're, as you were saying, the trend is your friend until yep. it's the end. Definitely, so when man. you find a very strong trend, that's yeah. when you'll you'll kind you'll of enter, play yeah. with exactly. the exactly. leverage trading. Yeah. Exactly, I only really enter it if it's a, a big pivotal point or there's, a, for example, a, a big indicator pointing that we might have a breakout and I'll enter a trade and put a very tight stop loss so maybe the most I can lose is a couple of percent and for me that's uh, that's acceptable in my risk appetite. Yeah, you, you see like the returns that outweigh the, the yeah, risk and, exactly and then like you the take risk that. Ratio. You risk reward ratio. This, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely, man. So I would love to ask you, you know, before ending is the predictions. We just had Carl. <laughs> he probably said 10 million yeah. in the next three hours. He was in the, he was in the millions. He was in the millions yeah. again. But he was also talking about other assets going through inflation, certain hyperinflation. Yeah. And uh, so he, like we said earlier, it's more like crypto up, but fiat down. It's, yeah, it's exactly, a combination of the exactly. two. But what are what are some of your predictions of the I really upcoming year or years? Could see, uh, I think we could see $100,000 Bitcoin in the next kind of six to 12 months, maybe six to 18 months. This is very, very easily, easily doable uh, where we are right now. And also I think that long term, for example, five or 10 years, we're gonna be seeing a million dollar Bitcoin. It's gonna happen. It's inevitable that it will happen. Whether it happens in the next five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, however long it takes, I'm going to be waiting for a million dollar Bitcoin. I'm sure you are as well. Yeah. Everyone at home will be waiting for that million dollar Bitcoin. It will come one day. We just have to be very, very patient. We were so patient to break 20K all time highs. And now look what we've been rewarded with nearly $50,000 Bitcoin. So in the next six to 18 months and $100,000, and that's fairly conservative as well um, for this cycle. I think we have not seen, we've only really 2X from the previous all time high. And that's yeah. not really that high. Yes, $45,000 Bitcoin is a high amount, but in comparison to the previous, it's just, it's, we have so much more room to grow. And I, I think putting a price target of $50,000, $60,000 is not really a, a realistic a target. So at least $100,000, $150,000 in six to 18 months, at least, that's very conservative as well. And then in the next five, 10 years, at least kind of three, four, 500,000, at least targeting upwards of one to two million dollars i think that's amazing i think you're pretty much on par with with carl in that sense and um <laughs> we're both very bullish <laughs> very bullish yeah definitely myself as well and uh and what what comes with the correction as well so obviously we're going through uh, a prediction for the correction yep. uh, obviously we cannot time the market perfectly but uh do you think the bull cycle the current bull cycle still has some yeah. gas in i definitely it, some think yeah. like i said previously we're seeing companies like tesla buy bitcoin at 45 or 35 sorry thousand dollars 
um, it shows that there's a lot more room in the market. And, and I think we, we have at least another kind of six to nine months in this cycle, at least. At and least. this could go on more. That's not to say that we couldn't wake up tomorrow and Bitcoin's down at 28,000, but that doesn't mean this cycle's over. Yeah, it yeah, can go down yeah. to 28 or 25 and then continue back up to above 50, 60, 70. So yeah, I think we have six to eight months, maybe nine months uh, left. And we should definitely be making the most of this at home if you're watching, do your research and stack those sats and watch you can in this market. That's amazing, man. You know what? It was an absolute pleasure you, going Thank through you your personal me. life, the struggles, showing people that it's always long term. It's not as easy yeah. as that. And uh, sharing some of the, you know, the life lessons that you've gained through the journey, your belief in Bitcoin, Definitely. your predictions, on-chain analysis, technical analysis. We really covered it all, yeah, right? Yeah, it was really nice. Really, I'm so happy for you guys to have me on the <laughs> channel. It's really a great opportunity. Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure, guys. Don't forget to follow Crypto Jack on YouTube, on Twitter. All the links will be below. Of course, like comment and blast that bell notification yes. so you get access to more timeless interviews yes. with the crypto Thanks bros watching, here guys. and we'll see you next week eight o'clock gmt premiering at a pc near you see you guys